How's it going, everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about our project, Slambot, the future of innovation. So let's get into it. So in recent years, humans have progressed artificial intelligence and technology to a point where many tasks and jobs have been filled by machines. But how can two high school students take advantage of this technology? We want to know how we can engage with the field of automation and build our own autonomous project using the components and resources available to us, and how could we apply what we've learned from this project in the real world. Uh, so I'm Elliot. I'm a grade 12 STEM student graduating this year, and I'm the engineering lead for this project. And my name's Sam. I'm also grade 12, uh, and I'm the coding lead for this project. Before we talk about our solution to automation, here are some examples of jobs that have already been tackled by other systems. You probably already use some kind of machine learning today. For example, Google Maps, which uses machine learning for navigation, or YouTube and Netflix, learning about your preferences to suggest the best media for you, or even Facebook, recognizing your face to group photos of you together. Many social media services use artificial intelligence to optimize the user experience as well. Automation and machine learning is also heavily applied in autonomous cars like Tesla's. Slambot is our version of an autonomous vehicle. What it does is it can create a map of its surroundings and track where it is in space. We designed our platform to be as versatile and easy to adjust as possible, making the prototype stage as efficient as it could be. The goal for this project was to create a robot which we can give a destination and have it navigate its surroundings to this waypoint. This was designed to be a proof of concept for an automated delivery, as it could be used to deliver packages to specific destinations without the need for human intervention. Vehicular automation is one of the most versatile types of automation, as it can be applied to many situations. If you have a robot that can not only complete a task, but understand where it is and where it needs to go to complete said task, it opens up a whole range of possibilities for automation. This is why our platform is so flexible. The brain of our bot is a Raspberry Pi 4, which is a full desktop computer the size of a credit card. The main sensor on the top is a LiDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging Sensor. The LiDAR uses a laser that spins 360 degrees and bounces off any nearby surfaces, back into the receiver of the LiDAR. The distance is then calculated by using the time it takes for the laser to bounce back. If you've ever seen a virtual house tour, this was created using the same technology. Slambot makes use of ROS, Robot Operating Systems, which uses a variety of libraries related to robotics and automation. So here's a short video of our robot functioning. So as you'll see in the video, it's running a preset path and mapping as it moves. Uh, I'll go a bit more into depth uh, about what code is running on the robot right now and how it works in the next slide. But as you can see, it's actually updating the map on the side there as it's moving. So the coding aspect of this project involves many processes which have to work together. Most of these can be handled by the ROS, which we run on the Raspberry Pi. One of the most important algorithms is called SLAM, or Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, hence the name SLAMBOT. This algorithm converts LiDAR data into a map by identifying new and already scanned points. When these points are considered and the new and old ones are combined, the map can be created. This algorithm does have some limitations, but it can create accurate maps if these are considered. The reason why we need to use SLAM in conjunction with the LiDAR is because the LiDAR data is static. The LiDAR is almost like the robot's vision, and then the SLAM is like its memory. So as you can see here on the left, uh, as the LiDAR scans new points, the old ones are gone, and it just keeps the points that are already scanned. But once it's processed by the actual SLAM library, we can use those points to add them all together and create a map. Once this map is created, we can use the ROS that we talked about to generate route plans and identify where the robot is. This is the next step for our robot. The SLAM library we were running using prior to ROS was called Breezy SLAM by Simon Levy. This is a really great library since it's so simple, but it can be a bit unreliable. And as you saw in the video that we showed, that was running the Breezy SLAM. And it's not super accurate and can have a bit of artifacts and problems. 
But hopefully once we get uh, ROS running, then that will actually update that map a lot better. One of the most important aspects of this project is our prospects for real world application. There are so many situations where the same technology could be used for an actual occupation if we scale up our robot, since it can map almost any indoor surroundings, is very versatile. Our project is a proof of concept that can be applied, for example, to package delivery robots, autonomous indoor mapping, or even could be used for emergency scenarios where it's too dangerous for a person. For example, to survey a damaged building after an earthquake. Though our robot is on a smaller scale and may not have a wide range of features, many robots currently in production, such as these ones seen here from Boston Dynamics, use a very similar technology and concepts. Notice the LiDAR sensor on both of these. This project involves many convoluted elements which have to work together to form the final product. We believe we need to invest a lot more time into understanding these elements to continue to a final point, as we ran into several roadblocks which left us stuck. The first was the, the limitations of our original computer, the Raspberry Pi 3. It did not have enough processing power to run the SLAM software, and the maps that were generated were not usable. We needed to upgrade to a Raspberry Pi 4, which was much more powerful, to generate working maps and run the other processes. The most fundamental aspect of this project was coding. This provided possibly the greatest engineering challenge in our STEM careers, as we had to apply some incredibly con complex concepts, including machine learning, uh, algorithms, and operating systems. We eventually decided to try to use robot operating systems, which combined almost everything we need for the coding part of this project. Though this sounds convenient, it is an incredibly extensive topic and has a very steep learning curve. For this reason, we require much more time to be put into programming and learning about ROS to fully complete our robot. Switching to ROS also meant we had to scrap all the code that, and libraries that we were using beforehand. Though we didn't quite get every part of this project working, we learned a vast amount and gained many skills which we can apply to many other situations. Since this project combines so many different topics and aspects of engineering, we got to apply a lot of what we've learned from previous projects, and learn a lot more about many concepts. Both of us are part of the first robotics team at our school, so this project was also a great way for us to apply what we've learned through the robotics club, especially with 3D modeling. We gained a lot of experience with Python and other coding languages, and got really in-depth to apply these algorithms and software needed to complete the project. Even though we did not reach our final goals, we gained a lot from working on something so advanced. Overall, this project has been a huge learning experience, and it was very engaging to work on something so complex. So this project has a great amount of potential, and only needs a bit more work to have a finished product, prototype. To achieve our goals, we will need to go very in-depth with ROS, and learn more about coding in that environment. Once we've gotten comfortable with that, we'll be able to use the maps that we generate with the SLAMBOT to identify its position and allow it to navigate to a desired destination. We have also come up with many stretch goals over the course of this project, including stair climbing, QR code recognition to identify package destinations, autonomous mapping so that we don't need to create a map manually, and many other features which will make this project truly autonomous. So thank you very much for watching, everybody.